So this beauty um, has caught me some of my biggest fish from a little stream. And it's a little streamer, obviously. Well, I say a little, it's not that little. Um, and it works really well for perch, minnows, but this one's more or less based on um, the colours of a crayfish. So a signal crayfish, oranges, natural brown, and that orange. And obviously it fishes... It fishes that way in the water, which you can't really see actually. But yeah, it fishes that way in the water. Let me see. Like that. And it bounces along the bottom. And it really, really, really works a treat. Um, not a hard fly to tie, but one that really does it for me. There's a load of weight in that. That's like tungsten dumbbell eyes. There's a lot of weight in there. And it's just got all the key ingredients that are like uh, barbless hook with a very long hook point. It just works really, really well. You can fish that on a sinking line. You can fish it as part of a, a nymphing setup and jig it with something really, really heavy on the point. It'll also work in reservoirs as a fry part. So go ahead and tie it. I start off with this in the vise. 900, streamer hook, size 9. Big hook, big fly. Excuse me. And because it's a, a natural head on the fly, I'm going to be using camel thread, brown thread. The first thing you do is I'm going to get a bed of tiny thread on here. And I'm going to connect the dumbbell eyes to look and figure out wraps. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave myself some space because I need to get the front of the zonker over here. So that's your dumbbell eyes there. Just lock them in. Like I say, I've got myself a little bit of space there at the head because I want to get a little bit less, a little bit more space like that. And then, so if you just do a couple of wraps one way over one eye and then a couple of wraps other way over another eye, it straightens everything up. Once everything's straight, figure eight, figure eight, figure of eight. I'll just show you how that looks. Sitting straight and flush. Some bits and pieces out of the way. So that's that solid. You can put some super glue in there just for a little bit extra rigidity. Come in right at the end of the hook shank. And I've got a little bit of orange rabbit here. Just a tiny little bit. I don't need a lot. I'm just going to catch that in. And when I catch it in, it'll kind of go round. I want it to go round. You'll see it just like deer here. I want to go round the hook shank. Like so. Like I say, I've not got a lot at all, just a little bit. The majority is at the head. So that's kind of sitting around the hook shank now, the way I want it. Not a lot at all. Again, I'm going to keep myself a little bit of bed of tying thread here because I need to get the natural rabbit in there. Give yourself a good bit, nice and straight, so you know what you're working with. The problem with a lot of rabbit is it kinks. Let me get a nice straight bit, nice straight edge to work with. Uh, probably here, there to there, and the scissors. And I do need a lot of this. So I've got a nice straight bit there. But I want it long enough so I can tie it at the tail and cut something at the head. So. Just using some moist fingers, separate the the thread, uh, not the thread, sorry, the fur, and then a pinch and loop, just to lock that in place. So it's covering the same length as the orange tail, pretty much, like so. Locked in, pull all this stuff out of the way. Sorry, I've got fur everywhere. I'm just gonna put this back in the in the bag. And now I come in with my dubbing. And there's a specific colour on this. And it's just worked for me the whole time. And it's a a weird 
Silvery Hen Spectra, number 15. A weird silvery colour. Just works really well on this. And I'm going to come up and down the hook shank. Nice touch and touch. I'm going to pull some of this out with a dubbing brush. So I've got plenty on there. Plenty. All the way up. I get a little more on there. And then all the way down and back up through with your thread. All the way down. Another turn at the head there. All the way down. So, as you can see, lots. And now where your thread has come up and through, get buried right in. Not too much tension, you'll snap the thread. A little bit of space at the head. I'm going to tie that off. I'm now going to come in with a dubbing brush. Pull some of this out. Try not to catch your thread, Stephen. Pulling your fibres, like so. So this little area here, and I need to create a little dubbing loop, so just create a little dubbing loop. Pack your thread so it's out of the way. And then with your dubbing loop tool, moisten your fingers and run it on the thread. Just leave that part there just now. I'm going to take a short section of this orange with my snips. Not too much. And then all I'm going to do is snip that off. So there you go, I've not got a lot. I just want to balance that and get it spread nice and evenly out. So I'm just going to take my time, move it down the pliers so it's evenly spaced, it's quite sparse. And I'm going to get that tucked into my dubbing loop. You might need to move it here and there, but the same length tips all the way through, and then just spin your loop tool, and then let that spin. So you've got a nice brush. Run your fingers up and down it, and then a few wraps. around behind those eyes. Nice and tight into those eyes. Until you've got a bit of bare thread. Once you've got the bare thread round, lock that off under and over the eye. So at the front there. And then trim away your thread. A locking thread turn here and then again in with my velcro and just work that orange. Look at that. Just work that orange back. Perfect. So the last bit is I'm just moistening the, the orange fibre and keeping it out of the way pushing it down to either side on the top and then looking to bring my zonker strip forward keeping as much of the hair on as I can and then catching it you'll see what I mean in a second so what I see that's going to be my tying in point I'm going to catch that in nice and tight If you need to, use your fingers and separate the, the hair, the fur. We've got a set of fur at the front, set of fur at the back. Like so. I then come in 
Do not use scissors for this? Use a blade. I'm going to try and do this so I'm not getting the light. And then just... And we can tidy this up with thread wraps. And because you've left a bigger space there at the head, just come in, tidy that up. Tidy it up properly in a second. And then what I like to do finally is, once I've got other hair out of the way, I'm going to come over again with these fig figure of eight wraps through and in between the eyes. So it looks like that. Doesn't look great just now. But then I come in and I use some of the fur from the discarded section. And I'm using that as dubbing. I'm going to be scared to get a fair bit on there. Using that as dubbing, come up and over these wraps. And then pull everything back. There's a lot of hair in the way, that's the only thing. And then just tidy up your head without snapping the thread, which I've done. Try and get some of the hair out of the way. And then just tidy up that bit. Quick finish, and that's your fly. A little bit of varnish, obviously, just in the head, just to finish the fly off. And that's him, my crayfish streamer. Although it works for everything else as well. Just pull some of the fibers out for the the head. There he is. You see what I mean when I, it's all tidied up once you get that, the thread wraps in there. Like so. Just a really good uh, pattern. Like I say, I use that, I use this particular one for, um, and it fishes that way up. I use this particular one for the small streams that I fish where there's crayfish present, but it'll also work very well in other big rivers, freestone rivers. I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. There's plenty more fly fishing on there. Um, fly tying, fly fishing, you name it, I've got it. A lot of better, everything for everyone, hopefully. I uh, really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again. Cheers now. Bye-bye.